Hi, it's Jesse, and welcome to Another Turning. Today, I'm following Ursula K. Le Guin's writing schedule, and I'll be doing it for the next three days as well. It is middle of February, and my school has a nice break in the middle of February, in which I can do literally nothing because nobody else is on break during this time. So, I thought it would be fun for the next for the first four days of my break, Friday, I have other things going on, to follow Ursula K. Le Guin's schedule, just to kind of try it out. So what is that schedule? Well, not it went viral on Twitter. The best I can do is that it was from a 1988 interview. I have no idea. I can't find the original source of this schedule. But it her schedule is as follows. 5.30 a.m., wake up and lie there and think. 6.15 a.m., get up and eat breakfast, lots. 7.15 a.m., get to work writing, writing, writing. For me, I'm not a writer, so this will be spent doing stuff for my actual real-life paying job, so putting grades in, doing prep work for lessons, that kind of thing. Or also working a little bit on my YouTube content because I would really like to start uploading videos again, so editing, creating thumbnails, noon, lunch, 1 to 3 p.m. reading and music. Today I'm reading The Daughter of Dr. Monroe, and because this is an Ursula K. Le Guin inspired video, I figured I might as well start a Wizard of Earthsea. 3 to 5 p.m. correspondence, maybe house cleaning. Definitely going to be doing a lot of house cleaning. I am a little behind on that, but also it's a good time to check social media, send emails to parents of my students record videos, correspondence in the modern sense. Uh, 5 to 8 p.m. make dinner and eat it. I don't know that I'll have many days it'll take that long to make dinner, but there it is. After 8 p.m. I tend to be very stupid and we won't talk about this, so that's my time to do what I feel like doing. Uh, and I'm just looking forward. I've been doing it for about a day now and so far it's been going well. Um, for the most part, I will talk at the end with how things went overall. So I finished A Wizard of Earthsea, and it was fine. Um, I knew going in that it was slower paced, that there's not a lot that happens, and I'm glad that I knew that because it did set my expectations, but I don't think it solved the problem, which is that there are no stakes in this. I mean, there, there are stakes. There is a conflict. I just <laughs> didn't care. Um, there's this thing, she does it, Ursula... Kayla Gwynn does it in this book, and I'm guessing based on the publishing of this one, it kind of is the origin of more modern fantasy having a similar thing, where we are told at the very beginning of the story that our main character is going to be great, that he's going to be amazing and important and relevant, and it's supposed to make us interested in the character when he's young, and not powerful and amazing and incredible yet. The problem being is that that's not quite enough for me. Um... I need to care about him now. So contrast this to like, say, the Farseer trilogy, where there are prophecies that say Fitz is important, but I care about Fitz because I care about Fitz, not who he's going to be. Whereas in this, our concern for Sparrowhawk is entirely supposed to be built on who Sparrowhawk will one day be. And he, it just wasn't enough. Um, I felt myself just, I, I couldn't, I, I didn't care. I also think words as magic are one of my least favorite magic systems that are very common. Um, but just the true naming of things is a relatively common magic system and it just doesn't do anything for me. It's unfortunate that I didn't like that. I might try another Le Guin novel this week. We'll see if I have time because I have a couple other loans holds that came in that I'm much more excited about. Finally going to get to Juniper and Thorn. But right now I've picked up Night of the Living Res. We'll see. Um, 
But whether or not I continue Earthsea, I mean, I've, I, I've been told the rest of the series is considerably better than the first. I just, I don't know if that's enough for me to continue. Maybe. I was already doing some recording here, so I might as well stick with it. Plus, it's a cozy reading spot. Um, so, we're three days in. Let's talk about why. Why did I want to do this besides the, I guess, obvious I could make content from it? So there was really one main driving force here. Ursula Le Guin's schedule, at least her sleeping schedule when she's writing, is surprisingly similar to my schedule when I'm working. So. I'm about half an hour early, earlier than her. I'm usually, you know, I wake up, I wake up around 5.15, but I'm out of bed by about 5.45. I go start winding down around 7.30 and then I'm usually in bed getting ready to sleep by like 9.30, 10, which is when she said, not that it's included in the viral part, but in the interview, uh, Le Guin mentioned that she's usually asleep by 10. So I really wanted to, on this week I had off, try to maintain my sleep schedule because I hate the way it feels on a Monday after a break to go back into work and just be so dead and so non-functional. So that was really my main goal here was to avoid doing that. But there were some other benefits with the way her schedule was set up in particular. I liked that she had a time in the morning for work. Now for her it's writing, but for me it really let me get ahead of my grading and my lesson planning. It's given me time to work on my videos. I really want to start uploading. I actually just posted a video today uh, and I really want to get back to uploading. So this giving me a set time and especially a time in the morning, which is when I'm most productive, really was helpful there. And then on top of that, giving me a specific time to read uh, was great because I read on my commute to and from work. It amounts to about, it amounts to about two hours of reading. And so being able to have two hours a day set aside to read when I don't have that two hours of reading time on my commute was, is wonderful. Um, and then on top of that, that time to do housework built in. I mean, I know she uses it for correspondence and yeah, I have an email to send every once in a while. Like I emailed some parents of students that are failing my class today to be like, hey, Let's work on that. But for the most part, that time became a housework time for me. And that's really nice because while our house is not a complete mess, my apartment is not a total pigsty, you know, with my partner being in law school and working part time and I'm working full time, we don't have the time to keep the house as neat as we like to. So this is a really convenient time for me to start working on this. So it really was just the perfect thing to try to keep me on my sleep schedule, keep me um, accountable for doing the things that I wanted to do over this break rather than just laying in bed all day, binge watching Sailor Moon, which I've been doing a little of too because the schedule does make time. I don't take an hour to eat lunch so I can watch a show while I'm doing that and it's really, really nice. So I've really been enjoying this. We have one more day and a couple hours to go. So I'll let you know tomorrow how I feel about the whole thing, but right now I'm feeling pretty good. What if we just pretend like this works, even though we both know it doesn't, because I just thought this would be cute as a backdrop. Um, all right, Thursday for 3.30 p.m. Let's talk about the negatives. Yesterday we talked about 
why I was trying this, why I thought it would work. Let's talk about what isn't working. Let's start with the morning. I don't know why. It is impossible for me to wake up at 6.15 in the morning. I think if I had to guess, it's because I'm used to for work getting up about 5.45 and something with that half an hour interval just works with my sleep rhythms and I can't wake up at that time to save my life. Monday, I managed to make it work. Tuesday and Wednesday, I woke up closer to like 6.45. And then today, I straight up woke up at like 7. Actually, I woke up at 5.40, got out of bed, went to the bathroom, and thought about just staying up and really should have. But I was like, nah, let me go back, lie in bed. I won't even try to fall asleep. And I was out like a light and didn't get out of bed till 7. I didn't even eat breakfast this morning. 6.15, not a good wake up time for me. Going through the rest of the day, that four hour, 45 minute period for work is too much for what I had to do because I'm on break. So I got all of my grades in on Monday. Uh, I waited a couple, I sent all my emails that I needed to to parents by Wednesday. And that was spreading things out. Now I intentionally took breaks. I could not work for five and a half hours straight and I doubt Le Guin did either. I assume she took breaks but I just don't have enough work to fill that time. And I did do work for the channel, but even that, like, I can only do that for short first of time. So that ended up being a lot of time, but ultimately that was okay because it fulfilled a gap that this schedule didn't account for, which is running errands. Maybe that falls under household, but if correspondence, so checking my email, responding to emails, recording videos, and housework like cleaning the house, taking out the trash, things like that, already take up most of that two hours. Honestly, that's the busiest two hours in my day. So errands didn't really make sense to fit in that. So I've been running errands during that work time. That's when I ran and got groceries on Tuesday. Today I went to the library, those kinds of things. And I think that helped. Whether that's when she would have done it or not, I don't know. Maybe she had an errand boy. I don't know. I don't have one of those so I had to make that work and that worked out well for me doing that but I don't know if that's naturally when it would occur other than that I mean the complaints are that I don't need an hour for eating but that's fine because it gives me downtime to relax watch an episode of the expanse although technically that's work for me too right now um so maybe that's it I mean for the most part other than getting up in the morning this has been going really well I thought of not doing it today. My partner is sick. Um, and so I thought of just cutting it after I missed breakfast. But then I was like, you know what? Let's stick with it. See how it goes. And it's going well. I will let you know tomorrow morning my final thoughts after finishing out this day. But so far, I'm really happy I did this. It is a couple days later. Specifically, it is now Tuesday evening. Let's talk about how this whole thing went. Um, and I don't really know where to start. I guess let's start with whether I accomplished what I was setting out to accomplish with this. Um, did it help me maintain my sleep schedule? Yes. Except that was completely ruined by the fact that I then spent a weekend in New York hanging out with friends till 2 in the morning. Um, but... Had I like reversed those weekends or just not done that, it really would have helped me keep in sync for my sleep schedule when I went back to work. As it was, I ended up exhausted on Monday, but again, that was two nights of five hours of sleep. You know, it's fine. Did I do all the work I wanted to do? Did I, you know, did the structure help with that? Again, yes and no. I didn't do everything, but not because I didn't have the time or I wasn't, I didn't have the structure to do it. It was because I didn't make a to-do list, so I forgot things. And that's fine. I maybe made seating charts the morning of Monday. And that's fine because the kids hated them just as much as they would have if I had spent two hours really, really hammering out what they were supposed to be. The big one, though, for me, which I, I should have realized would have been a thing, but it didn't occur to me until about halfway through the week, food. I am the worst about just remembering to eat and so 
I found it was just so helpful to have a set designated, this is my eating time every day, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Because the honest truth is, I, part of why I love teaching is that I have a designated, this is when I get to eat <laughs> time. Because I will, I will just forget to eat. I'll be like, oh, I'm a little hungry. I'm in the middle of something. I'll do it later and I'll forget. The downside of this is that on a normal day, I eat one and a half to two meals. <laughs> I eat dinner and then I usually sometimes eat lunch and I sometimes eat breakfast. I got so used to eating three meals a day. The first couple of Monday was a little rough because I didn't feel like I was tired in the morning. I didn't make breakfast and then I got to work and the lunch option for lunch that day, I did not feel up to it. So I had like a bag of chips. And by the time I got home in the evening, I was like, I am dying. So it got me a little too used to that. But overall, I would call this a great success. I read, I finished two books, three books, two or three books. I read Wizard of Earthsea. I finished something. Um, finished um, Daughter of Dr. Morrow. I think I finished another book that I was reading physically. And I read Jackal. So I got through like four books in that week. I got most of my work done. I did start posting videos again, and I have some edited or nearly finished editing. Um, and I have some thumbnails made for some of those videos. So I'm ready to be able to start uploading semi regularly now. So I think I accomplished most of what I wanted to do. My grades are up to date. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a success. So I have spring break, break coming up middle of April. If you want to give me some suggestions of other authors' schedules, I should maybe try following for a couple days. It won't be as long because Jordan Con's at the end of that week, but for like two, three days. Not Brandon Sanderson. I'm vetoing that. I'm not ready for Brandon Sanderson's writing schedule. But, you know, if there's another author you think I should try reading one of their books and following their writing schedule, let me know below. Otherwise, like the video if you liked it. Subscribe so you can see more from me. I love y'all. Bye.